This is a teaching tool to help you understand the different layers of the pelvic floor. I want you to imagine that you are lying on your back on the floor and a man comes and stands with a foot on either side of your head and you are looking straight up between his legs. If we were to peel off the skin and a few fascial layers, we would be looking at this. So if we orientate ourselves, here's the external anal sphincter with the anus. Here would be the pubic bone with the penis coming off there. And here would be the ischiopubic ramal attachment of these muscles. So what muscles do we have? We've got the external anal sphincter. We've got the superficial transverse perennial muscles, the bulbospongiosis, and the ischiocavernosus. And these make up the superficial perennial pouch. And they're called the superficial perennial pouch because they are superficial to the perennial membrane. This wooden stick poking out in the middle is the perennial body. And you can see all the layers are connected by the perennial body. It's a very important structure. So our perennial membrane is just a fibrous sheath in the front of the pelvis, so in the urogenital triangle, and it's got a little hole here in, in the man for the urethra to pass through, and it's obviously joined to the other layers by the perennial body. So pubic bone in the front, ischial pubic ramus on either side. So deep to that perennial membrane, remember we're peeling off layers from the outside in, we have the deep transverse perennial muscles. And these are in the deep perennial pouch. In men, we also have the external urethral sphincter. The deep transverse perennial muscles form a complete sheet over there, and they are important in the support of the pelvic floor. Okay, and then, the last layer is the pelvic diaphragm. So we are still looking up between the man's legs and here is the hole where the rectum will come out and here is the urogenital hiatus where the urethra in males will come out. So we've got some muscles and we are going to flip this over. But first I want to show you from the side you can see that the pelvic diaphragm is shaped like a bowl. And these are our piriformis muscles coming off here. But they're pretty horizontal at the front and then they curve up at the back. So if we were to cut the man in half and look straight down, we would take out the bladder and the rectum and we would be looking down onto these pelvic floor muscles which form the pelvic diaphragm. So now we have our levator ani, which is this muscle, puba rectalis, which comes up, loops around the rectum and attaches back onto the pubic bone. Pubo coccygeus, which also attaches onto the pubic bone and goes up onto the coccyx. Here's our coccyx because this is our sacrum up here. And then we have iliococcygeus, which is very confusingly named because it has nothing to do with the ilium because it actually attaches onto the ATLA, which is a fascial connection coming off the obturator internus muscle. These three muscles make up the levator ani. Then we have the coccygeus muscle, which attaches from the coccyx to the ischial spine and we've got piriformis, which is coming off of the sacrum and it's leaving the pelvis. So if we were to turn him around again, we've got the perennial body. Now the perennial body doesn't stick up at the top here, so don't get me wrong. It um, should be sort of like... So the perennial body should actually be like that. It shouldn't stick through. For teaching purposes, we will have it sticking through. All right, so we're turning the man around again. We still, so we're looking up. We've peeled off a lot of layers. We're still lying on our back, looking between his legs. So if we were to put the layers on again, we would have the deep perennial pouch. We would have the perennial membrane. 
and we would have the superficial perennial pouch. So hopefully that helps you understand the layers of the pelvic floor. So now if we were to look at how a female differs from a male, the pelvic diaphragm stays the same, but the layers underneath change slightly. So if we were to put the deep perennial pouch on, you can see it looks a bit different to the man's. And what is different? We've got a vagina. And here's our urethra. We've got an external urethral sphincter. And we've also got the deep transverse perennial muscles that go across the entire deep perennial pouch. But we've got two extra muscles. We've got this one called the compressor urethra. And we've got this sphincter muscle that goes around the entire vagina and urethra called the sphincter urethro vaginalis. All joined up at the perennial body. So we've got a perennial membrane in females as well, but it obviously has a hole for the vagina and the urethra. And then we've got the superficial perennial pouch. Here's our external anal sphincter, the vaginal opening with bulbospongiosis going around it, ischiocavernosis, and the superficial transverse perineae. And if we were to turn it like this, we could see we've got the superficial pelvic floor muscles, we've got the perineal membrane, we've got the deep perineal pouch, and we've got the pelvic diaphragm. So hopefully that helps you understand the layers of the pelvic floor muscles.